Okay, in this video, we're going to take a little bit deeper look at electrical circuits. You know, in one of the previous videos, we looked at some of the different symbols that we use to represent different elements in electrical circuits. Those included like light bulbs, resistors, variable resistors, batteries, wires, switches, um, but also included things like ammeters and voltmeters. And these devices are very important because they allow us to make measurements in electrical circuits. And so one of the things we want to make sure that we understand is how are they making that and, and what is the correct way to connect these things. What's most important about any device that makes a measurement is that you do not want that device to affect the measurement. And I'll give you an example where that happened for us in our physics class, and that is with the ticker timers. We connected this long strip of paper to a ticker timer, and then that piece of paper went got pulled through the ticker timer, and as it did, the little metal arm came down and it hit that little piece of paper. It kept hitting the little piece of paper. And so that was exerting a little bit of drag or resistance on the um, on the cars that we were having them connected to. So the ticker timer is very, it's, it has a very precise device. It, I mean, it, it makes it has a very small time unit that it can measure, but unfortunately it affects the, the measurement because it's actually connected to the device. Now with the electrical devices, there's nothing we can do about that. I mean, we must connect the ammeter and the voltmeter to the electrical system. We can't measure how much current by just like looking at something or just taking a picture of something or um, you really must connect something into that to be able to measure the voltage and the current. And then with the voltage and current, of course, we can also figure out what the resistance is. So there are three big electrical properties, V and I, and then V and I are used to calculate um, R. So I want to look at how these devices are connected. In the case of the ammeter, and remember the ammeter is, is designed to measure the current that's passing through a, a circuit or the number of amps that are passing through a circuit. These guys are connected in a method that is called in series. So what that means in series is that if I drew a diagram, the ammeter would be connected kind of like a chain with only a single path. So the current that passes through this resistor must pass through the ammeter in order to get to the resistor. And by doing so, the ammeter will then be able to tell us how much current was going into the, the resistor. You know, I think of the ammeters a lot like a turnstile at like Great America or at, a, at an amusement park that you might go to. That turnstile is there to count people. And it's, it's designed to not stop you. It does, you don't want to make it very difficult. You don't want to go up to a turnstile and you push on it and you can barely even move the turnstile. You want it to move pretty easily um, so that it doesn't interfere with people trying to come in, but you still want to be able to count. You want to be able to count the number of people that are coming in. And so that's what the, the ammeter is essentially doing. It's counting the number of charges that move through it. Um, and by connecting it directly to the object that you want to know the current for, it will therefore tell you what the current is in that, in that object. Now, something to think about is if the current does pass through the ammeter, then what should the resistance of this thing be? And again, remember, the, the key thing is that we don't want to affect the measurement of the device we're looking at. So I don't want to connect the ammeter and then all of a sudden the resistor is behaving differently because now it's connected to this device that has a lot of resistance. So in the case of the ammeter, since it's in the circuit itself, it's actually in the actual circuit, this guy must have very low resistance. So if he has high resistance, then what's going to end up happening is he will use up some of the voltage. He will use up some of the energy before it can get to the resistor. And so therefore, the resistor is not going to have all the energy available to it that it would have if that ammeter was not connected. So in order to make sure that we plug that ammeter in, it doesn't affect this guy, it must have very, very low, low resistance. And, you know, I feel like it's pretty obvious. What would be the lowest of low resistance? That would be zero the lowest root that you could possibly have would be zero. Now, no ammeter actually pulls that off. Um, there's actually reasons why you, you do have to have a little bit of resistance in there in order to be able to make the measurement, but the best uh, ammeters are gonna have very low resistances, like less than 0.01 ohms, um, in order to make their measurements as precisely as possible, but without affecting the, the other device. Now, the voltmeters, they work in exactly the opposite way. So rather than being connected in series, they are in connected in a, in a way that is called parallel. Now that doesn't, it's not a geometric word. It's not, it doesn't mean that the things have to be parallel to each other, even though I, I probably will draw them that way. It's not a requirement. It's, it's not about being geometrically parallel. It simply means that there is more than one path. In order to have uh, something be parallel, you must have two paths, right? There must be two lines. You can't have a line be parallel to itself. So it's not about the issue about whether these wires or the electrical devices are geometrically parallel to each other. It simply means that there is more than one uh, path. So I'm going to move the resistor down here just a little bit. We can draw it. Now, the way the voltmeter would be would be like this. It would go around the device 
and then reconnect back into the into the circuit. So as the current comes in from this direction, the current sees two options. It can go through the resistor or it can go through the voltmeter, but I don't want any current to go through the voltmeter because if I take this voltmeter out, I wanna make sure that the circuit is still working the same way that it was when the voltmeter was there. So if I allow current to be diverted and to travel up and through the voltmeter, well then that's gonna cause problems because it's not gonna give me the right measurement uh, on this circuit, or it's not that it won't give me the right measurement, it will give me the right measurement, but this won't be the same circuit that it was before the voltmeter was connected. So the way the voltmeter essentially works is it touches the circuit just before the device that you're looking at, and it feels how much energy do these charges have as they pass through, and then it looks at how much energy is there in the in the in the charges when it passes after the device, like the light bulb or the, resi or the resistor, and it looks at the difference between those. So if at this point it measures that there was 15 volts and then over here it measures that there's now only 5 volts well what the voltmeter is going to read is it's going to say 10 volts and that's essentially the voltage on the voltmeter but it's also the voltage on the on the resistor so the voltmeter gives you kind of this indirect measurement on the the resistor now because we do not want current to flow down this portion of the circuit we would want to have very high resistance Okay, we're trying to prevent current from being diverted. We don't want too much current. Little tiny bit in order to make the measurement, yes, that's fine. But we don't want to take too much current because then it's affecting the, the circuit again. What would be the highest of high resistances that you could get? Well, that would be obviously if it was infinite resistance. Now, I don't think there's really any ammeters that come anywhere near infinity, of course, but there are some that are very high resistance. I mean, even cheap uh, uh, voltmeters will probably have a resistance of between 30 and 50,000 ohms. Um, and the better ones might even have resistances more than 100,000 ohms. In order to make this measurement as accurate as possible without affecting the, the device that we're connecting it to. So the ammeter and the voltmeter are probably the two trickiest things to connect. So let's take a look at how it looks in actual uh, circuit diagrams. We'll draw two different circuit diagrams. So first we're gonna draw a circuit with a battery and a light bulb. This is like a common piece of equipment that we'll use to make our, our measurements. Um, and we're going to include an ammeter and a voltmeter with the purpose that they will measure the current and the voltage of the, of the light bulb. So normally, you know, you can start the circuit with anything that you want, but I am going to start with the battery. I'm gonna make it very large because I want this diagram to be very easy to read. Okay, so there's the, the beginning of our diagram. We have a battery, um, and now we want to start connecting things. Now, in this circuit, I'm only going to make one path for the current. Remember, the voltmeter doesn't allow current to go through it. So there will be no reason why I can't just put the ammeter right here and then continue with my diagram and put the light bulb down here. Okay, so what I have drawn for you right now is a working circuit. This circuit will work. That ammeter will read current. It will tell you that there is some current passing through the light bulb. You may not see the light bulb light up because you have to get a certain amount of current before the bulb will actually light up, but you will be able to tell that there is something happening in the circuit because you'll see the ammeter is telling you that there is some amount of current that's, that is flowing in there. So because the ammeter is connected directly to the light bulb without any possibility that the current was diverted, I know that the ammeter reading is giving me the current that is passing through the light bulb and it is also giving me the current that is passing through the battery because it is directly connected to those two uh, devices. So now we want the voltage of this guy. So in order to get the voltage, we will have to take a voltmeter and we will go around this guy and reconnect afterwards and put that voltmeter in there. So the ammeter is connected in the circuit, so ignore the voltmeter for right now. It's in the circuit, it's in the big loop. Remember, a circuit is a loop. And then in order to get the voltage, I'm going to put the voltmeter around it, but I'm gonna make sure my voltmeter has a lot of resistance so that it doesn't allow current to travel through here and it forces the current to stay headed to the light bulb. What I would not wanna see is that I put the, the voltmeter in there and all of a sudden the light bulb gets dimmer or behaves differently because now, although I am measuring its voltage, it's not the same circuit that it was before I put that, that voltmeter in there. Uh, let's take a look at one last circuit. You know, in this, this beginning uh, levels, you will not be asked to draw very complicated circuits, but all of the elements that were shown to you, whether it was a switch or batteries, light bulbs, resistors, variable resistors, those are all things that are fair game for you to be able to draw in your uh, circuits. So let's take a look at a circuit with uh, not only a resistor, but actually one of the variable resistors, because that's one of the ones that people kind of have a difficult time working with. Um, and then, of course, we'll put an ammeter and a voltmeter because we want to measure what the voltage is on this uh, variable resistor. So 
as I said, I prefer to start by drawing the battery, but it's, it's not a requirement. You don't have to actually draw the battery. If you want to draw multiple long and short lines, it's fine as long as you just make sure you have equal numbers of them. Because to rem just to remind you, each of the two long and short lines is supposed to represent the positive and negative ends of the, of the cells that are, are connected in there. Um, so let's put the ammeter in there. Okay, and now we're going to put in the variable resistor. So the variable resistor is kind of a tricky looking uh, device because it looks like a regular resistor, but then it has three connection points. And for our purposes, we're only gonna use two of those. Now you can connect it so that you use all three, um, but for our purposes, we're gonna keep, the, the, keep it a little bit on the simpler side. We're only gonna make two connections. So in all variable resistors, you will see that they have a um, they have a connector on both ends. They have two connecting ends, and then there's also a connector in the middle. And I showed that when I went over the circuit diagrams for the variable resistor. I actually showed a physical uh, version of it. So it has one, two, three connections, and we will always connect the middle one and the one on the end. Now I could have connected on either end here, but I want to connect to this this portion. So now what we need is the voltage in this variable resistor. So I'm going to connect the voltmeter before. It goes into the variable resistor and realize the current is coming in here and then when it gets to this middle connector it leaves the variable resistor so there's no current flowing through this part of the of the resistor this part of the resistor there's nothing happening at all there's no current there's no voltage there's nothing nothing is happening in there so i'm going to connect the uh, voltmeter to the point before the variable resistor and then i want to connect it to a point right after it leaves the variable resistor And so that's a, a complete circuit. This is probably one of the most difficult ones to draw because the variable resistor is, is just kind of a tricky looking thing to draw. Most of the things are much simpler. You know, if I just drew a regular resistor, you just connect it around before and after, much, much simpler. So these are kind of things at level two that you're gonna be likely to see that you not only recognize all of the symbols, that you have memorized all those symbols, symbols, but also that you can then start to put them together and to construct some simple circuits and then also be able to read circuits because we're gonna be doing uh, quite a few labs and we wanna make sure that if I, if I give you a circuit diagram you can look at that diagram and you can construct this thing you can get the battery and connect it in here you can get the ammeter and put it in here you can get the the light bulb connected correctly you can get the thing working so that it's functioning correctly and then you can give me both the voltage and the current because again with the voltage and the current I will be able to get the resistance in that. I will be able to get the power, the, the current and the voltage. These are the things that lead us to all of the other properties, the, the resistance, the energy, the power. All those things will come once we make those two uh, measurements.